Oh, okay. Let's turn this down. Am I here? Am I live? Okay. Well, I'm only doing that because it's apparently pretty easy to do. And I don't want to, you know, upload things and edit things. Although I should. I'm looking at you like you're, like you're from somewhere else. Who are you? I'm sorry, you? You're here? You are? Okay. Uh, oh, I started the video first. Oh, okay. I should know that. Okay. Anyway, so it's been a while since I've really posted something. I actually just posted something like a few days ago, but that was for some eBay buyers because I have some really, really, really cool speakers for sale right now. And uh, they really should have sold earlier than what they've sold, but because I'm not in town from where the speakers are, I have to have somebody like ship them for me and all this crazy stuff. It's been taking a while. So, um, trying to get some good video up of the speakers so people know what's going on. So anyway, here's what's going on with me. I've had actually a lot of opportunities for some really, um, good, uh, content of, um, what's been going on because I've actually relocated somewhat. I still have my house where I was, but where I am now, I am here for the time being. That may be eight months from now. That may be six months from now. That may be a year and a half from now. I don't know yet. At any rate, <clears throat> I've been keeping my inventory in uh, where I was before and I've been like bribing friends and family to go over to my house, ship items for me. I've had like a 10 to 15 day ship time. It's been terrible. It's been really terrible. And, um, you know, my gross uh, monthly um, revenue has gone from, normally I went from like 3,000, like 3,500, let's say, on an average, um, over 3,000, 4,000 would be a good month. But um, that's usually where I was. And um, I've been like so scared to hit this overview. And let me be clear, I do almost everything on eBay. I do a very, very little bit on Etsy and a very, very little bit on Poshmark. But uh, most of what I do is on eBay. So I look at this overview tab and it says uh, 1,000 something in this last month. And that's fair. I mean, you know, you have items and it's like, okay, I can buy this from somebody else and I'll get it within like five to seven days. Whereas if I buy it from you, I'm going to get it next month. Okay, that's fair-ish. So I do have best offer on everything just so that people can kind of like go, you know what? Okay. It's going to be a while, but I don't need it right now. So I can send an offer. And so that's definitely been working. Let me get some aqua. Um, but, um, it ain't working for me. So it's like, why even do it? Because I've, you know, a thousand dollars a month is not worth it. Even if I'm not like posting new things and whatever, on top of all the shipping and fees, that is very, very little a month. Um, so you may as well just work in a restaurant or something like that, which is totally fine. But um, my goal with what I'm doing is really to do a few things. Like I obviously I want to make money because I need to, to have my own money. <laughs> but also I want to, um, preserve things. I want to, um, and I'm not trying to say this is like a, uh, altruistic thing that I'm doing. I'm just saying like, I know whenever I see a thing like me, when I see my eye with a thing that somebody else is out there and they're probably going to appreciate it. So, I mean, like, it's as simple as that. And, like, I don't want it to be thrown away. And I know it came from probably an era which was not very long ago. By the way, like, probably, you know, even the early 90s, things were different. But, you know, 
things nowadays are so fast fashion focused in every aspect of our life, not just fashion, that it's just like, can you get it so much cheaper? Oh, here's these sunshades. And then they're, they're, you know, they don't do anything to protect your eyes from the sun. They just kind of like look semi cool, but then they're only good for a couple of weeks before like the screw falls off or whatever. And it's like, we're like, oh, but they were $5 or actually they're probably 12 or $15. And you're like, wait a minute, I can get something really nice somewhere else. Um, I don't have to spend a hundred dollars on a pair of sunshades. Um, anyway, I feel that for myself and what I wear and what I like. And I feel that there's things that I don't want to keep that other people would like. And that's kind of what keeps me going. I feel like this one over here, she's staring at us, right? Yeah. Anyway. So what I'm doing right now is um, trying to start anew. So like I said, I've been having family members. I've been having friends go over to my house and uh, ship items for me. It's very scary. It's actually backfired, you know, a couple of times. A lot of times it's gone over really, really well because I have friends that are like overdo it on the packing. <laughs> Maybe they take too much of my bubble wrap and I'm like, ah, profit margin. But at the end of the day, I'm okay with it. And and they don't know how to ship things. So I always end up spending more on things. Like maybe it's just a t-shirt, but they don't know where to find my little, um, you know, in my case on eBay, like eBay um, mailers and they can't find them. And then I go, okay, we'll just put it in a uh, cardboard priority flat rate. And so then I end up buying like a flat rate for like a t-shirt that I could send for $4 if it's far away, maybe $3 if it's close. And instead I end up spending six and a half dollars or something like that, which is fine. It's not fine, but it's fine because I'm not there to ship it. So um, now that we know that we're kind of here a little bit more permanently, this is a, a husband's job type of thing situation. Um, I've decided I can't cut off my revenue stream, one of my revenue streams. I need to have more than one. Um, and I do, but this is one that's actually important to me and one that I would like to actually grow into, um, some floor space in some capacity. What I'm thinking right now is possibly like an antique mall situation where maybe I have some of my own quote unquote booths, but then also rent out to other folks. Um, just because I really think that would be more interesting than like a thrift shop. Um, but at any rate, um, I'm in a town that is literally, when I say rule, I mean like if, um, you know, I'm from the Midwest. So a lot of things in the Midwest, people think, well, you're in the middle of nowhere. You're really not, you know, you're really not. There are cities like probably w within four hours of another city, there's another city. Uh, decent sized city, at least 2 million people. So if I'm in where I'm from around the Kansas City metropolitan area and another four hours, there's St. Louis, three hours, there's Wichita, which is a smaller city. But, uh, you know, from St. Louis, there's Memphis. From St. Louis, there's Chicago. You can go up to Des Moines. So all these cities are pretty much like kind of roughly in that same 1 million to 2 million people area. Um, I'm not saying these are huge cities. However, I am saying that those are cities that, you know, it's it's not the middle of nowhere. It's it's far from it. When you go out west, which is where I am right now, you realize what the middle of nowhere is. So, um, yeah, that's where I am now. I'm in a state that has less than 500,000 people in it. Or, well, no, probably more than 500,000, but not that much more than and, you know, the biggest cities in town are like less than 70,000 people. It's crazy to me. Like that is a suburb of a city where I'm from, um, you know, and I'm not from a Chicago. I'm not from a New York or L.A. or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's definitely different. Um, sure, there's scenic views. But at the same time, I don't have a lot as far as sourcing abilities unless I go about three or four hours away, which is Denver, which is great. Actually, Denver is amazing for um, sourcing. It's just that um, four hours doesn't sound a lot whenever you're, whenever it's just a day trip or whatever. But 
It actually is a lot whenever it's your main, if it became your main sourcing trip. So definitely this is not a full-time gig at this point. Um, but um, yeah, that's where I am right now. I wish that I would have shown you guys when I loaded up my truck from my house, whenever I was driving across country with this loaded up truck, whenever I dropped it off. Right now it's at a storage unit. What I would like to do is actually put it at a next step, like a warehouse unit, because I would like to actually have days where I can have the public come and just like kind of sell off stuff that I need to get rid of type of stuff. Like, because when I started what I was doing, it was a lot less focused on really what drives me. And what drives me is <clears throat> it is more preservation based. Yes, it's a business. This is not a museum. Um, but definitely whenever I see things that I think can be preserved and when I th see things that I know somebody else will appreciate, that's what drives me because there's certainly a lot of things that I keep, but, um, I need to probably quit this thing soon, but I would, I did want to show you guys what I bought today, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, so <laughs> these are fun things that I've done, uh, lately I've moved inventory from, uh, Kansas City metro area to the Old West out here in Wyoming. <laughs> so that's been a lot of fun. I'm in a storage unit right now. It's not ideal, um, but I needed to put it somewhere. I could have put it in my apartment. I technically have the space, but I really don't. I mean, we have a guest bedroom and the guest bedroom is not an inventory room. It's a guest bedroom. So, you know, I really just don't want clutter around where I am and, um, so I put it in a storage unit. Like I say, I am looking for some type of at least warehouse space. Um, but eventually I would like to make possibly a storefront of some kind. Um, I really don't want to do the thrift shop route. I know some people do that, but I'm kind of thinking along the lines of an antique shop route that might be nonprofit. We actually have a business here locally that is... Um, that needs um, client or patients. It's a, it's a patient-based business. And um, I would like to help people with their co-pays and things like that using my nonprofit. So that is a goal that is, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. So anyway, at this time, I'm just an eBay seller. I'm just a sometimes Etsy, sometimes Poshmark seller. And so anyway, I do find some cool stuff at the thrift shops here. It's just that the inventory is low. The turnover is low. So I try to wait at least a week before I go into a shop again. And then hopefully I can find something today. I think I found some really cool stuff. So if you don't mind, I'm going to show you some of those things. So I have them all around me. You're going to see, you can see a couple of creepers back here. And obviously they want to be first. So I'm going to let them be first. Okay. And she is first. Okay. So she... Here we go. Can you see her? Beautiful. Hello, ma'am. Hello, senora. Okay. And I don't know if you can see that much. I'm actually, I'm having trouble reading it, not because of a different language, just handwriting, you know? I think it's a lost art. Um, here's the backside. I've tried to leave the price tags on. So this is one of the good things about being in the middle of nowhere is that you have some really good prices, like $1.30 for this. And she is probably, I'm going to guess, let's see, what's my forearm here? Yeah, she's probably about 12 inches tall. I don't have my ruler with me. So she's like a paper mache. She's glazed. She is very beautiful as far as the illustration has gone. And if you read below, so it says, um, and, and I apologize if I get the wording wrong, but the uh, Yalalag, Y-A-L-A-L-A-G, and then S D O S D O D E O S A K A, I don't know, O-A-X-A-C-A. Anyway, it says paper mache and paper mache, mache is spelled differently, probably Spanish, I guess. Paper mache de somebody's name and I can't quite read the name. And then it says Mexico. And then it says two slash 100. Okay, so I showed it earlier, but let's see it again. So you can see what I was saying. That That's the, 
right here, there's the name I couldn't say of the person's name and then Mexico. And then here's two out of 100. So the reason why I got this at first, it kind of just like, kind of, I was like, what is that? You know, I'd already been down this lane and then I went down it again. I don't think that it's new. I think I just missed it the first time. That's why you should always go down a couple of times. Excuse me. So anyway, thought she was really neat. And um, I wouldn't have gotten her if she was three or four dollars. I probably would have let her sit there because I've actually never bought paper mache before. But this is really cool. I did see paper mache Mexico figurines. If you search that on eBay, some of them have gone for some decent money. Um, but yeah, if I can even get 15 or so dollars, I mean, I'll be okay with it. But I feel like I could get more because this is artist signed. And uh, in general, from what I've learned, I'm not a professional, though. in general, from what I've learned, whenever you see um, a signed art and it is uh, whatever the art is of that signature. So that means it's a print of it. So this is true in art, you know, you see, um, you know, maybe it's a painting, but it's not really a painting. It's a print. You see like five of slash 5,000. That's good. So if it's a, any well-known artist, that's especially good. But if it's a decent known artist, that's good. But if it's, it's, if it's an okay selling artist, Take a second look at it at least and just try to do a little bit more research because if it's a low number on the signed art, that is a good sign. So because it was two out of 100, so that's a, a low number. First of all, 100 is a low number. So if this is an artist that has any notoriety, that's really good for me. But even still, like these paper mache figurines, even without... Um, you know, being signed are still selling for something. So if I get 15, I'm glad. I'm happy. 15 plus ship, not 15 including ship, but 15 plus ship, I'll be happy. Um, it costs me a dollar and 30 cents. Not bad. Like I say, that's great. That's great. So, um, and the next thing that I got, I, I know I dwelled too long on that, but that's just something that I haven't really seen before. So I thought it was cool. Next thing I got was these Creepy angels, but I really do like, I kind of like angels, you know. Um, but yeah, they are creepy angels. And they're, I think they're twinsies, right? Are they twinsies? Maybe one time they were conjoined and now they're not. But anyway, super cute. Imagine that on your wall, like that, you know, like at your grandma's house or something. Really adorable. I don't, you know, a lot of times angels are related to Christmas time, but these are actually really cool. Um, check out this face. The, the thing that got me was this face. It's almost like a familiar face. Like I went to school with these girls. Um, Gertrude and Beatrice. I don't know. But um, they're really neat. Here's the backside, excuse me. So I wanted to call them chalkware at first, but I think that that's plaster. So you can see they are actually hollow, but they've got this little kind of like safety pin, not safety pin, what do you call that? What's that called? Paper clip, like paper clip type of hanging thing. So I'm kind of guessing maybe these came from a kit. I might be wrong because I actually like the way that they're painted and tinted. So that might be factory. I'm not sure. Either way, they're really cool. It's a cool subject matter and they came in in a pair. Had they come in just one angel, um, I probably wouldn't have gotten them. Um, what I paid for each angel was 80 cents. Again, that's why I got them. I used to not be a, I've always been a hard goods person, but any type of figurines person, I've actually been like kind of led into it just by things I've been watching. I've been watching Crazy Lamp Lady for like the last, well, since she was just on Relic for Coverus and had her own little um, sub playlist on that channel. Because I used to watch her metal detecting videos. Um, but, um, you know, influence is a real thing, guys. So, um, but no, I'm liking it because I'm, I'm liking what I'm finding. So anyway, it's opened my eyes up to a lot of different things. This next thing I've gotten, I probably would have gotten before any um, diving down the rabbit hole. This is just a little clock. 
It does need a new battery, so it's not moving right now. It's called, it's uh, by Brighton. It's a silver plated clock. It's a dollar 80. <laughs> OMG. That is from another thing, actually. I don't know which thing it was. I think I just randomly stuck it on there. That's my fault. It was a dollar 80, though, not 80 cents. Um, this little thing here actually, uh, how does it go? Oh, it goes like that. Anyway, it was just sitting on the shelf like that. And I was like, what is that? And then I saw it and I thought, well, that looks really neat. It's a dollar 80. I mean, like, live a little, try it. <laughs> okay, so let me keep going. This, I think I'm just going to keep it for me because it's just one. And I, if I can find the pattern and, and I find that it actually sells pretty well, then maybe I'll consider selling it, of course. This is just a Japan mug. How much did I pay for that? 30 freaking cents. Very cheap. That's why it's so great being in this little area because, you know, in other places you spend at least a dollar for a mug, even if it's a piece of, you know, nothing. But um, here you don't. However, the material doesn't move very fast, you know? But, um, so you can't get as much. But anyway, I just liked it. I just thought it was cute, cool, man. I actually have a set of like four mugs that are almost like this, almost the same shape and the same material. And they're from Japan as well. And they look like they have a mariachi band on them. They're like four matching sets. And this, this is just in my own personal collection. Um, and the mariachi band looks like kind of Japanese in the face um, or Asian in the face, which is kind of funny. But um, I really like them. So anyway, they're just on display. I actually haven't drank out of them. But those, that one specifically, I will drink out of. This one is actually my big ticket item of the day. So she is a Lefton figurine. Okay, April, Ms. April. She's got a little faux gemstone right here. She's super cute and she's not chipped anywhere. I was like, oh my goodness. And she has the original little tag on her. So it says uh, Lefton's designed by Marika, Mar Marika, Marika. Huh, a little thing in here. Really, really neat. Birthdays come for love's reminding that your charm becomes more binding. This figurine is to help you remember that you are loved and admired by the sender. Very cool. The price tag just fell off of her. It was on the bottom. I'll just stick it back on. Price tag, $4. It's a Lefton. I mentioned it earlier. Can you see the date here? It's not a date, it's a number. Okay, we're gonna move it out. It's, um, I'm not sure what the name is. It's copy written, it says. It says 5146. But the uh, sticker is a Lefton sticker, which is Japan, and Lefton is a very popular brand. I paid $4 for it, I normally wouldn't have, but I am actually seeing some good prices on these. Um, and it comes with the original, like I said, little gift tag on there. The only thing I don't like is that it's April right now. It's almost done. We're almost done with April as of like mid next week. So I'm missing out on April birthdays <laughs> for this year, but I think it should be okay. Um, this same thrift shop actually had several other left in figurines, which were like of the same vein as that. They had months on them. They were little birthday things. Excuse me, but um, they were more expensive. They were actually under the glass in like 12, 15 bucks, which I think was a fair price. Uh, if I get 15 bucks for her, I'll be satisfied. There are some that they're listing right now for 50 and 65. I just think that those figurines are really depressed right now and that's like a higher price. Some of the um, completed listings that I saw, which some people can hide their completed listings. So I will take, I will try to go a little bit higher at like 20 to 30. 30. See if I can sell it that way. Um, but I'll always put best offer on. I always put best offer on, but if I get it, if I sell her for 15 or $20, I'll be very happy. Um, $4 again, it's more than I would want to spend. Anyway, here's another thing. This is cool. Like, so I'm in this group. It's like Ellie Smith, Viking glass whores, <laughs> which is a terrible name on, um, Facebook. But it's a glassware group, and uh, you, this is, I, I should be in the actual 
natural light. So you can see how beautiful this is. It's blue. It's like blue teal ish color, you know, and it's like this floral kind of look. It's got the petal design here. I don't think it's Ellie Smith or Viking. I'm actually really not sure, but I'm, I'm seeing this like cut off thing here. And so I'm wondering if it's just like a China piece. I really don't know. Um, I'm really new at it. So I'm like, if I see something that I think might look like Ellie Smith or Viking from this group, like, you know, I'm into this, like, you know, I, I want to keep the things I like, but like some of the things I like weren't really glassware. But like when I'm in these groups that are glassware groups, I'm going, oh yeah, now I get it. So now it's like something that I want. So I'm like not mad if I'm keeping this a little longer and keep with some little lifesavers or some hard candy in there like your grandma, because this is a cool little thing. I like it. I like it. So anyway, I don't know who it, the maker is. However, it is really cool. And I only spent, and this is a little bit higher of a ticket item here, $2.50. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's keep going. Um, I showed you that one. This one's kind of cool. I don't know if it's a bajolical. I think it is, like that type of region. As far as the glaze goes, I'm still learning glazes. So I could be wrong. Do not take me for what I'm saying, but the reason why I got it, I thought it was cool. I didn't see cracks on it, but although I did find a hairline crack, I'll show you in a second. This is the bottom and this is the top. And that was what I thought was so cool. It's like little veggies, you know, like a little chili pepper, a garlic, a tomato. And this is like a leek. I believe it, is. See, it crosses over. It's a leek, I believe. Anyway, I thought that was super cool. So beautiful inside, beautiful inside. The crack I saw is actually in the lid on the inside. It's hairline, very, very hairline. I don't even know if you can see it. Maybe you can. Yeah, there you go. Right there, very, very hairline. Uh, I paid $1.80 for it. So I'm gonna try for probably 20, 25. I'll see where it goes. Very cool though. I was trying to figure out, and tomorrow in the daylight, I'm gonna, you, you can take, if you have the eBay app, you can take photos of an item and you can actually match it with other items. And I tried to do that, but I'm gonna try to do it tomorrow in the um, natural light behind, like just put this thing in front of like just some white poster board or, or just the wall. So this is the only item it sees and see if I can find something that's more of an exact match. Um, here's another thing I found. I think I'm going to keep this for myself and I don't know why, but it's kind of speaking to me. I don't know why. This is a Christmas kind of item though. It's a Noel thing. Oh, cute. Anyway, it'll look really cool with, um, light going through it. It's like a stained glass, but of course it's not, there's no like metal in between. What do you call that? Is it a cloisonne? I'm not sure, but it, it you know, you kind of call it a stained glass is like foldable. And this little middle part here is actually kind of like a foldable metal. So I hate kind of folding it because I don't want it to eventually snap off on me. Really cool. I did see one on eBay right now. It didn't sell, but they were trying to sell it for like 10, 15 bucks. I don't know. I just think it's cool. I think I'm going to keep it for myself. I didn't really buy it for resale. A couple of the things I bought for me. I love shades. Right. I have a, you know, pumpkin head, you know, I think I don't need to like tell you that, but um, see, I like the, I'm always out of white shades because I have very few pairs. I have a lot of shades, um, but this pair in particular, I find that I'm digging. There is some scuffing that is going to be hard to get rid of, but I think I can clean them up enough to where they're not annoying to wear. I always try to get a bit oversized, even a little bit more oversized than this is better for the size of my head, in my opinion. But there's a couple other things I'm selling, but here's another pair. This is this is slightly bigger than the white pair. I'm all right with that. But it's actually got some kind of, I think, permanent scratching, which I might not be able to salvage. Anyway, like them. Always a fan. Uh, Swizzle sticks. I've been finding swizzle sticks lately and I haven't found them 
I feel like I would have picked up swizzle sticks always had I found them, and I have not found them. About a month and a half ago, I was back in KC, and I was looking, and I find this pair of, like, or not pair, like, just like this, just, like, bundled up. And they were longer than this, and they are have fruit on the top, so, like, little bananas, grapes, uh, watermelon, whatever, on the top. Cool. And then at the very next thrift shop, I saw another pair, uh, not pair, again, it's like just like this. They're just bunched together, swizzle sticks, and they were smaller than the other ones. They had like points on the end. So I could, you know, you could tell how if you had a cocktail party or you had cocktails, you could, you know, stab some olives or, um, you know, minced or pearl onions or whatever you want to stab in your little cocktail and have a little ma mad men party. Um, that's been about a month and a half ago, but then today I found these, and they are swizzle sticks as well, but they've got the little, you know, um, I remember these, but, I mean, I need, like, the plastic version, you know, like the, um, do they still have that at Sonic? Sonic used to have a little scooper straw for their, um, I actually forgot about that, and I need to, I get Sonic drinks once in a while, but to find out. I'll have to remember because I remember they used to have that for their crushed ice. So anyway, I guess it'd be kind of like that. So this is what I found today. They are not with fruit at the end. They're just with like colors at the end. I had a cousin growing up and he and his wife, his wife was my cousin and he was married to my cousin, I guess. So they were both my cousins, but he was like my cousin-in-law, I guess. Um, but yeah, he was just, um, he had his own bar at the house. You know, this was in the eighties. And uh, really cool as a kid. He had pistachios. You know how, like, you have those bar nuts or whatever. He just had the whole setup. And he had swizzle sticks. He had plastic ones. He had glass ones. He always gave us kids the plastic ones. Um, it was so cool, though. But so anyway, so every time I see swizzle sticks, I think of him. Um, really cool. Paid a dollar thirty for these. I may end up giving these to my niece's new husband and my niece, both of them. Um, almost done here. This is Cruel. I believe it's Cruel, not Cross Stitch. But they're kind of like Hummel figurines. And it is actually framed. And the frame actually is, I think, from the crafting kit. <laughs> but it is framed. Um, probably in the 70s, early 80s. But it's so cute. And, like you know, these Hummel figurines and like, I I have these, like it's a music box and it looks just like these with the little kids and the umbrella or whatever. I hope it will sell. I paid a, oof, excuse me, paid a dollar 30. And I'm going to probably ask probably 15 to 20 plus ship. Probably. I mean, I always try to ask a little bit higher at first. I always do best offer. So I'm always hoping for, I mean, I mean like I'm hoping for at least $15. I am almost done, but I do have some really cool stuff. This is not as cool, but here, kind of cool. Um, <laughs> not really. Okay, it's called a maxi controller, but this is like a controller um, remote thing. And uh, yeah, it's on eBay. It's probably about $25 to $35, even in pre-use condition. So... I went ahead and bought it because, how much did they charge me? There's no price tag on it, so the girl just priced it at the register. I think she charged me $2, $2.50 tops, but I want to say it was $2. Um, okay. Here's this. This is a Dymo labeler. Let, what do you call that? Letra tag. Dymo Letra tag. Okay, so I have not tested this yet, so perhaps it doesn't work. However, I did check the, this is what you need to do if you ever buy an electronic, which I love electronics. That's actually what I, I prefer. I'm just getting into this like ceramics, whatever crap, <laughs> but I'm loving it. But um, at the other, at, at another rate, like this is beautiful. Like there's no corrosion whatsoever. I'm guessing it probably works. They just don't use it anymore. I paid $1.30 again, very cheap. This is probably between $20 and $30 that I can sell this for, assuming that it works. This is a bag full of cake toppers. So they're Wilton 1991. 
There's quite a few of them, but there's like, apparently these are bridesmaids. I mean, you know, I know I've been married, but I didn't do the whole like traditional stuff. So, you know, anyway, there's a few grooms. Oh, excuse me, sir. Ken, turn around. There you go. There you go. No brides, but there's saucy uh, Ursula. Ursula, you know, as her hot self in The Little Mermaid. You know what I'm saying? Not whenever she's the octopus. Anyway, there's a whole bag of them. There's mostly bridesmaids, but there's how many groomsmen are there? I think just two. Whoops. Lost one. Yeah. Two groomsmen. The rest are um, bridesmaids. One of the bridesmaids is missing a bouquet, so I'll probably have to, unfortunately, because she's plastic, toss her. Um, which I hate doing. I hate to throw away anything because I feel like there's there's an audience for everything, but probably not in that case, to be honest. Um, okay, here's another kind of weird thing. Like I probably normally wouldn't pick this up, but because I'm at this place. Okay, so this is like this weird metal grid, grid thing. You can see it says Bath and Body Works. This is like a lotion or hand soap dis dispenser cover. So you put your little bed, Bath and Body Works, not Bed Bath and Beyond, Bath and Body Works thing in it. And then you got the little pump. You can pump, 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 you know? So it just makes it kind of cutes it up a little bit. But I loved it because it was an owl. <laughs> I've already tried it on my own hand soap. And my hand soap is Jergens. And apparently it's too fat for this owl. It's too fat. Um, anyway, I paid 80 cents for it. I hope to get at least between 8 and $12 for it. Um, which I believe I will, especially since it's an owl. It seems to be the going rate for any of these covers. So that is super cool. Okay, here's a boring thing, but I, you know, I like it because it can make me money. This is a scrubbing bubbles thing. It's actually a little dirty on the top. I'm going to have to clean it. I don't know if you can see the, the dirt around here. So I'll clean that out, make it look cute. Anyway, this goes for about $35 to $40, and I spent about $2 or $2.50 on it. It didn't have a price tag on it, so she priced it at the register for me, but it was about $2 to $2.50, so that was about $40. I'm almost done. I've got three more items, right? No, four more items. Sorry. Not this one. That was too confusing. Okay, this one is a dress. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Pardone. All right, so I love this dress, and I am too big for it. <laughs> Cries, tears, tears. Okay, anyway, this is a homemade dress. This is not a brand name. Normally, I stay away from not brand names, and I try to stay with vintage items. However, this is so cool. I just love the fabric. So I don't know if you can see it. Let me get a good picture here. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, all right, you see, kind of cool, really cool, some Aztec, some Native American print. This is homemade, handmade, and very well handmade, and these are pearl snaps all through the front. So this whole dress is just like, psh, tear them off. <laughs> You're welcome, fellas. So anyway, super cute. It's like a prairie dress, sleeveless prairie dress is kind of what I'm going to call it. I couldn't resist. I'm not a huge clothes person, although if you look at my store, I do have a lot of clothes because clothes sell. Um, but at the same time, like I try to just like look through the clothing racks and like if I see cool print um, or if I see some aged fabric, I'm like psh, zoned into that. I really try to not do otherwise. There is a store back in KC that I would go to that had like great um, prints that were, I mean, brand new, like anthropology prints and things like that. And, um, I don't know why they got those, but they did. And I could get them super cheap, like fill a bag for $5 cheap. So I would go ahead and do those, but for the most part, no. Okay. This is a crazy mod 1960s neon, not quite not not like a Peter Max style, but this is cool mixed. I don't know, not not to say mixed media, but mixed pattern. CC floral and geometric and neons and oh my gosh, I love it so much. I kind of thought it was just patterns at first. Then I thought it was pants, and it is kind of both those themes. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not, but okay. Oh, this is kind of confusing. This, this whole thing is confusing. So I wish I had a mannequin to show it to you. I do have a mannequin actually, but the top, from what I'm gathering, and I have a mannequin in my storage unit, which I'm not at right now, top from what I'm gathering is this stretchable. So you can see this little, there's a uh, eyelet hook thing here. This is what makes me think that it's actually super old, but just never worn. Like somebody's grandma made it for them and they never made it and they never wore it, which I understand. I had a grandma I really love and she was actually a great sewer, but you know, our styles are different. So there's actually a lot of great things that she made for me that I never wore. So anyway, if you hook that, I think that was the neck. I might be wrong. I'm gonna have to check on my, my thing. And there's like a, I can't even describe this for you. So difficult. You can just see the cool pattern. But there is like a pants seam that goes through the bottom. And then there's this weird tie up. So my thought is, you have this, you wrap it around here like your little bib, right? Then you take the pants seam, you put it between the legs, and then on the other side, you bring it up to tie it around your waist. And then you have kind of like this really cool mod 60s overalls. So on top of the super cool fabric, which I've sold fabric like this for like 40 bucks for not that much fabric. So this is like a weird overall set. If I can get it to look like that on the mannequin, I think I can at least get $40, possibly if not more, although I'll have to wait. But this is really, really cool. I love these colors. It's so, so cool. Okay, last two things, I promise, okay? Two games. I don't try to get a lot of games, like I'm trying to cut down on games because it's, it's not that they're hard to ship, it's just that I can't predict the shipping, especially anymore with the way they've changed shipping. This is called Knockout. I almost didn't get it because I feel like it's only, um, from what I was looking at today, I think it's between $20 to $30 sold uh, in good condition. It's a 1991, but I kind of had to get it because I'm like, even if I keep it, which this is a terrible thought, but this like cool thing, it's like, you're supposed to like make these like cool, like walls out of these weird colored blocks, you know? And then you take this thing and you, bang! <laughs> you know, uh, that's cool. Anyway, it's called Knockout, cool game. I'm down with it. If I, you know, I'll put it up for sale and when it sells, it sells, that's great. And I'll get, you know, $25 or so. I probably paid a couple of dollars. Ah, that game. Then I found this game. Always look at the games, though. A lot of them don't go for more than $20 to $30 if they're good games. And then if they're not, they're $15 with shipping included, which you want to avoid completely. But I found, you know, one of my best flip ever was actually in the game section. And it was, you know, I'll tell you about it sometime, but this it was a 1970s game. Very rare. It I didn't realize it until after I bought it because it wasn't easy to find on eBay or anything like that, but it actually ended up selling for me for a thousand dollars within like a couple of hours. Like, so there's just dudes sitting in their basement waiting for this game. So always look at the games, <laughs> always look at the games. Um, this next one, you've all heard of it. We all know Kerplunk. Kerplunk is the shiz. And it actually has everything it's got. I mean, I haven't counted the little sticks. I haven't counted the marbles, but it's got quite a few marbles. It's got quite a few sticks. It's got the little, I don't know, carafe, whatever thing. It's got the tray, and it's got, like, the little display case, everything. So from what I was seeing on eBay, I can probably get about $40 based on the amount of the complete, the completion of this game that I have. So... Um, if it's 20 and I'm wrong, then it's 20. But I, if, from what I'm seeing, I think I can get 40. I really do um, comfortably. So I really think that I got, if I'm being conservative, I think, uh, um, well, I spent $32 and some cents. I spent under $33 for this whole load. Um, I believe I can get over, well, I know I can get over 200. I'm trying to be as conservative as possible. But 
a $32 and 50 something cents investment into $200. Not bad. Um, again, I'll try to make more of a story arc as far as where I am right now, because that's a good day. I haven't been to this thrift shop in a long time. And I went to another one before that and didn't buy anything. Although there was one thing I could have bought for 30 cents and sold for $30, but I didn't want to stand in line. Um, which happens, but, um, and there were, there were probably other things too, but at any rate, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, I thought I'd do this. So hopefully that's okay. All right. Bye.